Well, hey guys, uh, here we are. Uh, this is the review for Underworld Ascendant Update 4. Hopefully this is going to be one of my final, if not the final review on Underworld Ascendant. Given the press release and the press releases and a lot of information about the patch notes for the Underworld Ascendant updates, this is going to be more or less a finalization of what they want the game to be. Although we'll get into some of that in a bit. My general impressions of Update 4 are that if they had released Update 4, or if they had released the game in the state that it is now, I think a lot less people would have issues with it because uh, the game as it is right now is eminently playable, pretty fun. Um, it's actually just a really great time, and I had a really great experience with this playthrough that could be due to a number of other factors but ultimately yes i had a really fun time with this game and to be honest this was the first time that this felt like a game in the sort of looking glass pedigree you know maybe not up to the level of of some of the previous games that that team has worked on and that family of people but definitely much much closer and it feels well and above better than many many games i've played and if you also take into account let's put this compare this to many indie titles i think already it's it's really showing itself to be um something unique and special um so uh yeah this game really feels more like the game that i was hoping that it would be um it it has a lot more polish it has a lot more uh stuff going on uh, a lot of the things that we were expecting, you know, more NPC interactions, a world that feels more alive, a story with more urgency and, and um, well, a story that's more coherent to begin with, um, more or less flawless gameplay so that the, you know, unique systems that they put in the game can actually be experimented with properly. So that's just my impressions of the game. Um, yeah, I, I think that it had it released like this, it wouldn't need to be in the sort of pseudo early access state that it's been in since its release. I think it would have been probably uh, accepted by the community more as just sort of a a buggy game that needs a little bit of extra polish in, in updates and patches. But other than that, I think people would have been more or less happy with it. Um, definitely not everybody, but... But for, I think a large majority of people would have been would have seen this and said, okay, especially for a thirty dollar game, not being not being uh, priced at sixty dollars like a full AAA game, but being priced at thirty dollars, I think there'd be a lot of people saying, this is more or less what we expected. So I'm extremely happy to say I'm going to go through a list of just kind of some general notes on what's been done to the game so far. Now, I would start by saying, and I'm really happy to say this. I experienced no, I, re I repeat no through an entire, I think I, my playthrough was between 14 and 20 hours for, for my update four. Um, I experienced no game crashes whatsoever. Um, I experienced no game breaking bugs. Well, except for one and we'll get into, well, I'll just tell you right now, there is one bug still in the game. I don't know what's, why it's there. If you go through a gate in one direction, it leads you to a tunnel um, that leads you to the underside of this castle. It's in the last dungeon of the game. And if you try and go backwards through that gate, it's actually filled with rubble. And you can't get back through. Now the problem is there's no way to get out of the area um, underneath the, the castle. Really, there's no, there's no place that you can jump unless you have one of the higher jumping skills. You can't use the teleport skill reliably to get out of a situation like that. So, th But that's the only bug. And... While it could be seriously detrimental for some players if they don't have a save before that point pretty close, it didn't stop me at all. I reloaded the save before I went through the door, told myself don't go through it, and I was fine. But other than that, there was no game-breaking bugs, there was no crashes, there was no major glitches that stopped me from doing stuff. None of the crazy stuff like where you'd see, you know, the underwater sections that need to be drained, where you'd see like enemies just walking around in there, or where you'd fall through the floor or we'd fall through the floor into the water and then not be in a swimming state. All of that stuff has been just totally dealt with. And I explored thoroughly each area of the game. I didn't see anything like that. So I'm in in incredibly pleased to say that they have done an excellent job at um, testing this and, and getting 
to the heart of where a lot of these bugs were coming from. So uh, really kudos to other side for taking the time to go back. And because I mean, a lot of games that we see like this, you know, you know, six, seven, eight months on, you know, the, I feel like the development teams just give up and then they just kind of settle on whatever. We still see the same stuff. This was a radically different experience from the last two and a half times I've played the game. So, um, yeah. Oh, another thing I was happy about is having played the game through about two and a half times, um, I was sort of not looking forward to this playthrough at all. To be honest, when they had the the when they released the update, I really only did it to a give them a chance and b you know since I have been sort of keeping track of their progress on this channel, I felt like I sort of owed it to I don't know the channel itself to say okay let's let's try and keep up with this and and put the next update on and 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 also I found a way to actually record gameplay now for this update which I haven't before. Um, I uh, this this review will sort of be a a testament or a small review to uh, GeForce Now as a streaming service. As I've mentioned in my previous reviews of this game, um, on my base system, I'm not actually able to run it or run it very well. Um, I think I can run it very low resolutions now after the, the current update because there's been massive performance improvements, but it still runs my computer a little bit hot, hotter than I'd like to and um, at low resolution. So it's not really worth recording the footage for upload because it's it's so low, the resolution. Anyways, I used uh, GeForce Now's streaming service. I signed up for the beta. Um, and I have to say, even though they uh, recommend based on my, <clears throat> it's actually not my uh, bandwidth, but my latency to the GeForce server, I kept getting recommendations not to use the service. And I can see why. If you actually watch through some of the footage that I'll be uploading, yeah, there's areas where the resolution has to downgrade or the lighting doesn't look so good because the video feed from the streaming service uh, is of a slightly lower quality. Um, but overall, I was able to play the game at max graphics at 1920 by 1080 and 60 frames per second, which I would never be able to do on my system. Um, so I was just happy to be able to play the game in, a, in, in the way that I feel that it was intended. Um, so really a shout out to them. I, I was very impressed with how the service works. Um, I have it for free right now because I'm part of the beta. Is it something I would pay for? Uh, it really depends. Um, the list of supported games is a little bit low right now. In fact, be, other than this game, there's really nothing in my library that I would... Well, there's nothing in my library that I want to play that is currently supported by GeForce Now. So... I mean, if it was if it, if it was like five or six bucks a month, maybe I'd consider it because it's definitely better than having to, you know, buy a whole new rig. You know, you're saving a lot of money. But if it's going to be like 15, 20, something like that, I don't know if it would be worth it for me. <clears throat> but I have to say I was pretty impressed with the technology. Um, you know, I don't have super fast Internet or anything, but I was still able to stream this game, you know, 60 frames a second, uh, 1080 resolution and I had no real problems. As long as I was making sure my router was happy with the connection and I was just checking my internet speed before I launched, uh, I usually had no problems. Um, but as I was saying, I was not really excited for this playthrough of the game because I knew the dungeons by heart, and while that's a good thing in terms of being able to get through the game quickly and, and have more fun experimenting, um, I was not having fun exploring the last time I played. You know, I knew exactly where everything was. Nothing was different at all. Um, and so it was getting kind of boring and, and tedious. But what I'm happy to say is that uh, they've given sort of a visual overhaul to many areas of different dungeons. And in addition to that, they've added additional locations. And they've also changed the layouts of many parts of the dungeons in this game. So... If you've played this game a lot, it's not going to feel that different to you, but I, it was a breath of fresh air for me. I was really happy to be exploring things I had never seen before um, and, 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 and going to dungeons where the layout was similar, but it wasn't exactly the same, so I didn't actually know where I was going, and I still had to explore and figure things out. I knew generally where I needed to go, but... Um, Oh, and the, the enemy placements are a lot more randomized now, and uh, even though they didn't add a ton of new enemies, it's basically just one new enemy type. Um, this enemy type is pretty tough to fight, and it comes in three different forms. There's an invisible form, a poisonous form, 
and just the normal form. And the invisible and poisonous uh, take a lot more damage to take this enemy out. It's called a bellum. It's kind of this monster type creature. Um, but it's a welcome change of pace because they're sort of frightening looking, but also they're a lot tougher than your other enemies. Um, and the poison one will do tons of damage, and the invisible one, they're kind of hard to see sometimes. So it adds a little bit of um, a variety to the combat. In addition to that, in the first two and a half builds of the game when fighting enemies, you would typically just fight only skeletons. And maybe once or twice per level, you'd fight like a Saurian or something like that. Occasionally, you'd see a thief walking around somewhere. But now, the enemy variety is a lot more varied. It's typically uh, skeleton warriors. That's obviously the bread and butter of the game's enemy base. But you will also be fighting... Um, well, they've they've just uh, included a lot more variety of enemies. So instead of one or two Saurians per level to fight, you'll be finding six or seven or eight. They'll be grouped with the skeleton warriors. Um, they've had a lot more variety to the types of skeleton warriors you have, and it's not just cosmetic changes either. Each different warrior type has different things they can do. Some can poison you, some can cause bleeding damage, some, because they're armored, will just take forever to take down, so you have to be careful about what tactics you use. Um, and then in addition to the beasts that can come out of nowhere. Um, the skeletons, you know, they'll, they'll use ranged attacks if they can, or they'll run away. But the beasts really just charge at you. So not, you know, anything earth shattering. But here's basically, the again, the first two times, two and a half times I played the game, I just, there was no, I mean, I felt like the enemies were almost always in the same place. Always in the same number. Always of the same kind. Like there was just, combat didn't feel different from one encounter to the other. But that's totally different, I feel, in this build. I feel like combat is a lot more um, various and unique and it's got a lot more going on. Um... Uh, oh, in addition to the fact that they've added a shove mechanic and they've just tweaked uh, the combat a little bit more. Blocking feels uh, much more natural and fluid. Uh, combat is more kinetic and so it really feels intense. I also played on the normal difficulty this time, which I think I played on easy the first time just to get, or the second time just to get through the campaign a little bit faster. Um, this time I played on normal and I think it was a healthy difficulty. Each each melee encounter um, provided a, a, a pretty hearty challenge uh, and the tweaks to how melee combat works and how enemies move and stuff like that are definitely felt um, in the game. You, you do feel more engaged, it's not just mindlessly hacking away at the enemies in front of you, you definitely feel more engaged and uh, you know, I, I do regret actually this playthrough. I didn't try and set up each counter a little encounter a little bit better. But I did experiment with some different ways to take enemies out that I hadn't even tried before. Because typically the easiest way to take out enemies before was to just rush at them as quickly as possible and just mash the attack button until they died. Um, they're a little bit bullet spongy in this build, so that's not always advisable. Like, for example, I had never tried playing with fire directly against them. I would light things around them on fire indirectly to try and damage them or get them to flee. But this time, uh, you know, I, for example, I used a flaming orb and just ran up to one. And because the, f the fire was damaging him as he was coming at me, he was often put into stun animations and stuff like that. So it actually made him de easier to deal with than if I'd used my sword, which had actually just broken. So weapon degradation also factors into how this game plays um, now. And so once your weapon breaks, you need to think about, you know, your weapon's no longer going to be the most effective means to dispatch enemies. So you have to think about, do I have fire? Do I have magic? Can I set up traps? Can I sneak around the enemy? So can I just run past the enemy? So yeah, because the enemies are more difficult, more hardy, um, and because of the systems that work together, like weapon degradation, hunger, um, things like that, you're not just gonna, it's not gonna be mindless combat anymore. You do need to think, you know, maybe you can try and lure your enemies into traps. Um, oh, another thing that's nice is archery is no longer a, <laughs> it's no longer a get out of jail free card. In the first two builds of the game, especially the first build, there was really no reason to use any other weapon than the bow. You could one shot, I don't know, 80% of the monsters in the game and maybe two or three shot everything else. Um, with well-placed headshots and with a decent stealth build, you just didn't, yeah, nobody posed any threat. 
Uh, you could hit everything at range, um, and arrows were everywhere. Well, they've definitely nerfed the stone arrows. What you can do is, if you rescue the rogue character, Fane, he will actually be a sort of... Uh, much like the fences in Thief Deadly Shadows, he can sell you specialty items that the other uh, the other vendors won't. Uh, one of them being, or two of them being, one is a sniper arrow, which does uh, extensive, uh, they call it adroit damage. I'm assuming that means damage from cover or damage from stealth. Um, and then there's a steel-tipped arrow, which does as much damage as the original arrows in build one of the game. However, they are very expensive, and he doesn't carry a lot of them. So you can't use that as a crutch as you, you know, as you were able to in the first build of the game. So a lot more balancing of the game to encourage you to play with the systems. Additionally, I have to say, this this next thing I'm going to talk about, it's definitely a, a plus and minus type thing, a positive and negative uh, attribute of the game. So in my first and second and a half playthroughs of the game, you would get uh, skill points all the time. Enter a dungeon, get a skill point. Even though that's not a feat that you need to accomplish to get a skill point, the skill point system and feat system were broken. So the game was improperly assigning you skill points for stuff you may or may not have been doing. Um, so, you know, it would, perhaps an enemy wandered into a trap right in some part of the level well you didn't lure him there and he's not even in the same room as you you know um and you would get a you would get a skill point for that or sometimes the game would think you had done something that you actually didn't and you'd get a skill point for that so um by the end of the game you know i remember, I remember my first playthrough i had enough skill points to basically you know be all three builds at once stealth magic whatever and I only stuck with stealth because that's what I'd been working with. But I could have, you know, I could have done anything at the end of that game. I could have, you know, just totally maxed out my mage character with all my stealth skills and combats. I mean, it didn't matter. Um, same thing with the second and the, the third-ish playthrough. Same thing. Now, with this playthrough, uh, they have fixed, basically, the feat uh system there was one or two times where i accomplished a feat and they didn't give me the points for it but that was very rare i mean typically if i did what the what the little skill menu said i would get a point the only problem is you don't get points for anything else um you literally don't get points for anything else you, you finish a story mission no points you finish a side mission no points so the problem then became instead of having too many skill points to spend i had too few and uh, this made, you know, kind of rounding out my build very frustrating because um, there was definitely things that I needed towards the end of the game that I just didn't have access to because I just couldn't afford it. And I was, you know, I was running out of feats to actually accomplish to get the skill points for them. Um, and in the original build of the game, sometimes you double up on, sometimes it awards you skill points for doing the same feat twice. Um, and I didn't really have an issue with that. I think a smarter way to do it would be like, okay, you can you can, re you can repeat this uh, action maybe a, a maximum number of times. Like you can only do, you know, a kill from stealth like three times before you stop getting skill points for it. But at least you need some sort of way to farm skill or farm XP or farm skills a little bit so that, you know, if you're like, oh, I just need that one more skill point to get that... Um, skill that's going to make the game that much easier for me i can do that but uh they fix the feat system and it's very uh specific about what it wants to give you skill points for and it's very limited in how many you can get the negative of this is obviously yeah you cannot get every skill that you want in the game unfortunately you can't even get any, every skill in the in your class that you want in the game um which is a little frustrating. You know, if you go for a mage build, you'd like to have most of those skills by the end of the game, right? Um, to really feel like a, like a totally powerful mage character. Well, it's just not the case in the current build. The good thing about it is it's a lot more like, you know, the game's uh, from its pedigree like System Shock 2, where, yeah, you can't just do whatever you want. You have to pick a build and stick with it. And... It's very important that you spend those skill points wisely. If you try and be a bit jack of all trades in the current build, you're not going to be powerful enough to the end game. And that's another good thing that they changed is that the game is a lot more difficult now so that 
when you get closer to the end game, you know, if you're not, if you haven't been spending your skill points wisely, you may have a lot of difficulty getting to the last several sections of the game. Um, so just keep that in mind when you play that it, it is a lot harder to get skill points now. Now they did introduce a new game plus, which I was really excited about, and I went to test it out just earlier today because I had just finished the my uh, playthrough of Update 4 last night. Now, all of us know, or all of us assume, right, when we hear new game plus, that you're going to keep something from your original playthrough, right? So you may not keep all your items from your original playthrough. Like, I think Deus Ex, right? Um, Mankind Divided? Yeah. You, when you do New Game Plus, you don't keep, as far as I remember, you don't keep all your stuff. You don't keep your sniper rifle and this, that, and you, you, you don't keep that. What you do keep is all your uh, upgrades, right? And in this game, I, unfortunately, when I read the patch notes, I just briefly glanced through New Game Plus, and they said, oh, yeah, I, I said something about silver and skill points. So I assumed, okay, you don't keep your inventory because, you know, some of the enemies in the beginning of the game are very low level you're not they're not going to want you you're going to be bored in two, two seconds if you're fighting you know everything's a one hit kill for the first third or half of the game so yeah that's fine but at least let you keep your skill points so that you can play through again and just build this character that just has everything and just really have fun with all the systems the game has to offer right and then i also said oh keep all your silver that's what I thought it said. Keep all your silver so that you, you know, the money barrier is not as big. You don't have to focus on doing so many side quests. You can just focus on playing around with the AI and playing around with the traps and maybe going through the campaign a second or third time. Well, unfortunately, I don't know why they did this. Sometimes with them, it feels like one step forward and two steps back. Uh, I don't know why they did it this way. Um, no. When you do New Game Plus, you don't keep all of your skill points. You don't keep all of your silver. They start you with what they say is a healthy amount of... That's what it says in the patch notes. A healthy amount of silver and a healthy amount of skill points. What that meant for my New Game Plus playthrough that I tried to start today and then quickly abandoned because I was like, well, screw that. I'd rather just start the game over. I mean, maybe not, but I just played through it. I don't need to play through it again, especially if I'm not going to have everything no what it meant for me was about 80 gold which is not very much in the game especially when a lot of the items that you're going to need later on costs 2500 5000 uh and seven skill points or excuse me 12 skill points which is if any of you have played it that's maybe three or four skills um which is not a lot i mean it's better than starting off from scratch because you do get to get all the points for doing brand new stuff again but it is, uh, it's not the same as starting off with, you know, your 50 skill points that you had from your original playthrough so that you can continue with that original build, either completely max it out or add some new elements to it. You know, if you were shit at sword combat, but, uh, you, you relied heavily on your magic a lot, maybe you'd want to add some combat points so that, you know, if you run out of mana, uh, combat is not such a, a slog, Right. But they didn't, so hopefully, I'm hoping that they fix that in the future. That's easily patchable. Um, and that's not, that's not a bug or an error, that's just a difference of opinion on what the player should be experiencing. So, I took issue with it, I was a little disappointed, I was like, oh, it's New Game Plus, I might actually, you know, I was actually, even though I've played this game a bunch now, um, and I was really disappointed in the first couple of builds, I was really excited for this new game. I was like, okay, yeah, I'm going to go through and I'm going to get all the skill points, and I'm going to really play with the the skills that I never was able to touch before, and that's not really the case. So, um, another thing that they've added, which I really, really like, uh, is, well, so there was an issue in not having enough NPCs in the game. I still think it's sort of an issue. You know, if you are if you were hoping this to be like an Elder Scrolls game where you go into the town and you can talk to everybody and everybody has a little backstory, I'm just sorry to tell you this game's never going to be like that. What they have added is is what I think is actually from the little bit that I've played of uh, Ultima Underworld is a little bit closer to that game, where you'll encounter people, and there'll be a, a, a little bit of backstory with them, and yeah, and then they will provide you with something. 
either a piece of loot or a map or they become a character you know back in the city that you can interact with and, and buy stuff from and that's kind of what's going on here so uh, it, it does add a lot more interesting stuff to do with the the side quests by the way if you're playing this for the second time or maybe even the first time my recommendation to you uh, because this is my this this remains one of my major criticisms of the game is that um, if you're going through this game uh, and you want to just enjoy it and, and have a good time don't focus on side quests okay the only reason you should be going out and going on a side quest right is to farm a little bit of money if you're trying to buy some new equipment that you just it seems expensive all right other than that just don't even bother with it you know um they are so samey and repetitive and the other issue that i wish they would address with the side quests is okay let's say that they send you to one part of this dungeon right to go kill this thing right that's your main quest objective well while you're there you may pick up a number of this special type of leaf and you may pick up a number of this special type of fish and you may kill x number of uh ghouls or whatever and what's frustrating is when you get back from your your main quest and you turn the quest in and they say okay here's all the side quests what will then happen is you will see on the side quest board it'll say oh get this number of leaves kill this number of ghouls um, get this number of fish right but the problem is it will be from that specific area of the dungeon that you were just at meaning you've already accomplished all these goals but now what you have to do is go all the way back there because they don't count what you've collected previously you go all the way back there and you do it again exactly what you just finished doing and that happens nine times out of ten if you were just having fun and exploring while doing your main objectives so they're samey they're basically a waste of time especially in the early game and that's where they're the heaviest they'll offer you 50 gold 100 gold to go do it which will buy you nothing and you find more gold in the dungeons just crawling around anyway so what I would advise anyone playing to do is just do not worry about the side quests until later in the game and then just do a few of them to round out your uh, your finances you know uh, because later in the game you'll be getting 1500 2000 for the same kind of crap like go kill three slugs or go collect three flowers I mean it, it, the difficulty of them doesn't increase except for you know the fact that the enemies around the objectives are harder to kill but other than that it's doing the same exact crap and it's it's not interesting it's completely tedious um, so only do a few of them towards the end game if you just need the extra cash um, and that's what I would do and you know they tell you in the game oh you need to do them to get well they don't award skill points for just doing the quests they're hoping that in doing the quests you will accidentally stumble upon feats you will accidentally accomplish some feats or you will, you will find opportunities too. But let me tell you, you will have plenty of opportunities in the main quests and just and just exploring the dungeons to 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 farm out skill points or, or obtain skill points anyway. So just don't worry about it. Um, that being said, there is one new class of side quest that is a very welcome addition. Whereas in the original builds plural of the game, the there there is that mechanic if you're familiar or not there's many of the dungeons are half flooded or covered in lava or what have you right and if you go to this machine called a materia modus you can take a thing called a mana core that you get from uh, killing a certain type of enemy in the game and if you put the mana core in the machine it'll change that part of the environment so it'll drain the part of the flooded dungeon or stop the lava although I think they took the lava out I don't know if it's actually in the game anymore where you can divert flow of lava but um but you see what I'm saying so now parts of the dungeon that were inaccessible have become accessible now there's a new type of side quest where you will actually rescue allies of each faction for them and what this requires is that you go use the materia modus to open up the extra part of the dungeon and then go find them and the other thing I like is that um, for many of them what there is is like a little puzzle to get to them and it's like an underworld based puzzle it's a it's a looking glass puzzle it's a it's a how do you get around this it's it's like a like um, we're not gonna ruin any of the puzzles but you have to use the game systems and you have to think about what you have available maybe you have a spell that gets you something to get through the puzzle maybe 
Um, it's a physics-based puzzle. Maybe uh, you can use fire to get around the puzzle. But you get around the puzzle, and then you let the person free. And then one of two things will happen. Either they will become uh, an NPC back at the, the main city, and it'll open up um, new things for you to buy. For example, the bazaar, the bazaar of the Arcane has to be manned by someone that you rescue from one of these places. And uh, if you were ever wondering what the point of the main store in the game was, because they never had very good loot, and uh, especially towards the end game, well, the Bazaar of the Arcane is where you can get all of the stuff that you need to really become like a badass. You know, I remember my first couple playthroughs, the max armor I had was like 2% or 5% towards the end of the game, you know, whereas in this playthrough I had like 40 or 30 or 50% armor, you know, path, past 100 um, you know, this is where you get stuff that allows you to collect mana faster. This is where you get weapons that do devastating damage. So, um, yes, that added a lot to the game for me. Just having, not only going on that little quest that was totally different than anything I've done before and having to use underworld systems to finish the quest, but then having the reward afterwards of now I've got something not only haven't seen in the game before, but is incredibly useful. Um, another thing that might happen if you rescue an NPC is they will give you a map to a part of the dungeon that you haven't found before. And again, much like with the finding them, you will usually have to use a material modus to uh, have access to that part of the map. And then the f cool thing is these maps are pretty well built, again, sort of puzzly platforming dungeons where you have to find uh, all of the loot and um, and figure out a way to get through the dungeon and get what, what you need and then get back out. Um, and just the exploration of it too, just finding new areas in the game to just explore. Um, so yeah, I think that was a, a, a nice addition and I think it's more like how the NPC interactions worked in Ultima Underworld. But yeah, for those of you expecting to be able to talk to NPCs and get backstories and dialogue choices and, you know, maybe dialogue quests and stuff like that, it's, I don't think it's ever going to happen. This is not that kind of game. The game is really about playing with the systems and crawling through each dungeon and coming up with unique solutions. It's not about, you know, story quests with different characters and stuff. Um, although the improvements they've made are... I'd say fairly admirable, but it's not its not going to be a game changer for a lot of people. But it was a welcome addition for me. It helped uh, break up the pace of the game and round out a lot of the gameplay. And it also made me feel that the dungeons were much bigger and more extensive than I had previously thought. And it also gave a purpose to that system that they introduced in the original build, which is the Materia Modus, which, to be honest, in the original builds had no function whatsoever. There was never anything to explore in the places that you uncovered but uh now now with the newest update it's um it it has a purpose it it's um and it, it it adds something to the game at least to me it added a lot more enjoyment to the overall game actually being able to properly use those and they they felt like they had a purpose um Oh yeah, I talked about uh, combat. Oh, another thing. So the, the save system was one of the biggest gripes when the game first came out. Now, they did fix it with the first ever patch of the game, but I just want to say, even with that patch, there was some issues, quick saves. It wasn't quite clear how they worked, and sometimes load times could be pretty extensive with the quick saves and things like that. So, um, And then it wasn't clear how normal saving worked, if normal saving was going to put you back at the beginning of the level. or but, So it wasn't really clear. Uh, I have to say now, the save system is totally perfect. It works exactly how you think it will. Um, you can create multiple individual saves with a hard save so that, you know, if you do something bad in your quick save and you get stuck, you're not screwed. Uh, and then your quick save will just load you right back where you are. Um, and then you can use your sap silver sapling as a quick spawn point if you're just okay with dying. You don't need to reload a save you know, that's how it works. So it totally works perfectly now. It works how you would expect it. No gripes there. And that's actually going to lead into another compliment of the game is that if I haven't mentioned it already, uh, yeah, the performance increase on the game is just fantastic now. Uh, you can, I mean, I know I was using a streaming surface, but I actually ran it on my PC as well. And I was able to run it 
at 60 frames a second at the original resolutions, no hitching, no frame hiccups, no massive drops to performance just because I was looking at a piece of fire or something, really just felt smooth and playable and and there was no weird animation issues or anything like that. Everything just looked and played wonderfully. They've even added this new cool thing in combat where if you take someone out in a cool way, um, like with a timed sword strike or something like that, that you um, you get like a little nice slow-mo death for the person, which is, I mean, it's not overdone and it just really works. When oh, I forgot to mention about combat too, they've added two new things. So you can shove people. So if they're close to the edge of a cliff or a trap or a pit of lava, you can shove them and maybe push them in. Um, also shoving them will stagger them. So if you're having trouble breaking the defenses or something, a nice shove might help. Um, in addition to that, if you hold down attack and charge up an attack, you can do a forward stab, you can do an overhead slash, and you can do a sideways slash. And these will all have different sort of uh, damage variables associated with them. And it's a good way in combat to sort of uh, try and get some extra damaging is using these slashes. Um, and I think depending on how they're posturing their defense, you might want to use a different slash. Although this isn't the greatest system for that. The combat's a little too frenetic and they're a little too bullet spongy. Uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance did a much better job of angling your strikes and stuff like that. Um, like you would in real sword combat. But this is fine. I never found myself being able to really focus on what the enemy was doing enough because it was so frenetic to be able to say, oh, I want to... I want to, you know, do an overhead swing or a forward stab or anything, you know, I, it, but, you know, you change it up and you do start doing more damage than if you just hack away at the enemy. If you hack away at the enemy, it could take minutes to kill him, but if you try and time your sword strikes right and charge them up, um, you'll be able to take them out much faster. And that adds just some more depth to combat because now it's not just go forward and slash as quick as possible. Now you have three different moves and a shove attack. They all have different damage multipliers, and um, you can use them somewhat strategically to try and take out your enemy more quickly, or to just deal more damage. Um, so, a couple of disappointing things in the game. One I'm still disappointed with, but I'm not that disappointed with because I sort of expected it, especially once I read the patch notes more carefully. First time I read the patch notes, they said, yeah, we introduced new runes, plural, except they didn't. <laughs> it's just one. And um, uh, they said that, uh, yeah, you know, it's got new rune combinations and this, that, and the other thing. And I, you know, I just did a cursory uh, read of it and said, like, oh, okay, they finally put the last few runes in the game. All right, cool. We're, we're in business. But then when I went and reread the patch notes about halfway through my playthrough of the game, they said, no, no, they just added the beast rune. Now, the reason I'm not that disappointed is because it has become clear to me. Although I will say it's kind of shitty of oh, other side not to just come out and say, we are not finished with the magic system. We are not finished with this other system. We're not finished with that. And just be honest and just say, yeah, these things will come out in time. But I have a, I've been expecting these things to come out every release. And so now I'm, I'm totally content with just saying, okay, magic system is not 100% yet. What I mean by that is they haven't even finished putting all the runes in the game. There's still two runes missing from your rune bag if you get all the runes in the game. And it's quite clear from the wands and stuff like that what those runes are. I think one is going to be metal and earth and one is going to be time. Um, the one with metal may allow you to manipulate metal or create patches of earth so you can put down a silver sampling or um, maybe uh, spawn a sword in front of you. If you do like spawn metal, it might spawn a sword or something. Um, or ideally, yeah, be used to like move metal, maybe open metal doors that are locked with the uh, abyssal keys. Maybe you can get into some of those doors a little bit earlier in the game than you would if you had to wait to find the abyssal keys. I'd love to see something like that. And then, yeah, you already, I think by the end of the game, you learn the spells for slow down time and, and things like that. Um... So, but you don't have the rune to do it. So those are clearly things, and I think there's even a feat associated with slowing down time and killing an enemy in slow-mo. Uh, so we'll just have to wait. It's unclear when those runes will finally be put in the game. Um, but it's much better. I think the last time I played through, I was missing four or 
Yeah. So they put in no, they did they did do two. They put in two new runes in the game. Um, one allows you to have like a scouting orb, like in Thief, which I didn't think was that useful. But then I realized, you know, I never found a good method for planning out my attacks on enemies if I wanted to use trip wires or if I wanted to try and do something clever because as soon as the enemies see you they just rush at you and then I realized oh yeah I can I can now use the scouting orb spell to go ahead figure out where the enemies are and then try and come out with a plan of attack so that was kind of cool and then the beast spell you can spawn a deep slug. Uh, I think there's a couple other things you can do with it, but another thing you can do is you can spawn the new enemy type. Um, so if you want a Bellum to fight for you, you can spawn one now with the uh, with the uh, new rune. Um, and I'm sure I haven't... I think it also stands for wealth, and I think you can actually spawn gold for yourself. So uh, later in the game... You know, if you've leveled your mage character up enough, you can actually spawn gold for yourself, which is pretty cool. So, um, yeah, but I was very disappointed initially that, okay, yeah, they still haven't finished the magic system, but now I'm not surprised anymore because they're just rolling it out piecemeal. Um, see, I talked about that. Oh, yeah, uh, another thing I was disappointed in, yeah. Uh, I mean, if you're a backer, this isn't going to make sense to you, but for us who weren't backers and just bought it on Steam... There's still no place to buy pets uh, or acquire a pet, and there's still no additional backpack, like a, a larger backpack you can buy to expand your inventory, even with the Bazaar of the Arcane and all that. So, yes, that, again, I'm not surprised because we haven't seen it in, in further builds, but, w again, what I'm disappointed in is it's just not, there's no communication from other side as to when these things will happen and where they are and why they're not there. Those may be DLC down the line for um, just regular consumers uh, and non-backers. Um, and I think it's also very clear from the update, updates that most of what they're doing is to just try and appease backers that feel ripped off, you know, because they don't even, they don't even like, like I said, they don't even address that you can't, uh, you don't have access to the pets, you don't have access to the backpacks packs in the standard build of the game because they don't think that they're, I don't think that they're necessarily super concerned about people with the standard build of the game. As far as I understand, the player base is actually it's continuing to shrink, and so the only people that they're really trying to appease are the backers, so that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I was a little disappointed in that. Um, I was also disappointed in the fact that while they fixed a ton of bugs in the game, one thing that is still all over the place is the AI. AI is a lot better than where it was when the game first launched, especially when it comes to hostile AI and you. Where the game falls apart is friendly AI. They still haven't really figured it out. Uh, friendly AI will often not target the enemies and will just wander around. And in addition, the enemies cannot or will not aggro the friendly AI because they just don't see it as a threat. And so they will just always focus their attacks on you, for the most part. and. Uh, they will almost never aggro the friendly AI. I will say this, when the friendly AI works, it does add another level to the game. You can rescue Saurian allies from these um, holding cells on the map, and they will help you, and they actually pack quite a punch. I think one of them even took out an Animus for me. Um, so yeah, they can take out some of the tougher enemies in the game for you, uh, if the AI is working. And if the AI is working, then I have no complaints because it all works very well. You can spawn a thief, you can spawn a Saurian, I think. You can spawn a Bellum. Um, the only problem I have is that I... <sighs> there's such a high mana cost for it, and I was having trouble getting mana through my whole playthrough, that I just didn't do it. Because 9 times out of 10, it wouldn't work. And so if they can fix that, it's actually going to add a lot to the game. Because if you've got, you know, if your weapons have broken, if you're just tired of fighting, if you just need a distraction, you can spawn, you know, two or three Bellums or, you know, an Undead Knight or something like that. And he'll take care of, like, a large group of the enemies for you and you don't have to worry about doing it yourself, you know, because that gets a little tedious sometimes. Um, so I was really disappointed that, while the AI is doing so much better, especially with the enemy AI, enemy AI is pretty good. They almost never really screw up. They're good at uh, varying their attacks. They flee now. 
um, if you've damaged them too much. Um, and uh, the thieves are really hard to kill because they're very good at doing that little teleport move and when they're low on health. And then they'll go someplace, and then they'll pop up and stab you in the back. And so, like, they're really a threat now. They're not just this weird, annoying enemy type. They're like a threat. You always have to be careful where they are. And uh, you got to try and do as much damage to them as quickly as possible. Um, but, yeah, there's definitely issues with the friendly AI. There's also an issue with the new shoving mechanics and everything. Uh, physics in fighting is a little crazy. That's why I called it frenetic earlier. Yeah, sometimes you'll hit an enemy and they'll go flying across the map. And you'll see in my playthrough quite a lot, I lose track of my enemies all the time because I will hit them and they will go flying <laughs> across the map or flying across the room. And then I gotta go track them down. Um, and I think it's kind of cool and it's kind of fun, but it doesn't feel like it's supposed to be like that, you know? And if it is, it's, I think it's supposed to be to a lesser degree. But uh, yeah, that's one thing. I did notice this. Uh, they have fixed a ton of bugs. They have fixed a ton of movement and clipping bugs, but I think they overfixed some of the object manipulation bugs. Uh, climbing certain size objects and manipulating objects like crates and stuff, it has all these weird clipping issues with the character now. So sometimes when you're holding a crate, if you get near something, you'll get start like just randomly rotating around the crate because the physics and the, the collisions are freaking out and they're trying to figure out how to offset the player holding the box and things like that. Um, one time I lifted the lid off a sarcophagus and all of a sudden it accelerated out of nowhere and hit me in the head and because the game calculated a certain mass associated with the lid and the velocity hitting my head, it just instantly killed me. Even though all I did was gently lift it off the thing. And I might be able to clip that in here. You can see it. Um, yeah, sometimes, you know, you'll brush past stuff and it'll go flying across the room. I mean, it, I've talked about this before. I just wish they hadn't made this game in Unity. Unity has always had these kind of issues. Um, and, oh, another thing, yeah. So, movement used to be an issue in the other builds, right? But on certain surfaces, you were fine. Um, they have fixed all of the movement and, and dropping through the floor and stuff like that issues. The only thing that remains though is that when you have complex geometry like all of the all of the wooden scaffolding in the game has very uneven floors and that's an artistic choice right it's to make it look like you know rickety and old and ancient and falling apart right so you'll have planks that are slightly higher elevation than the other and planks that are bent out of shape the problem is is that those aren't just cosmetic uh, bits of those aren't cosmetic meshes or cosmetic bits of geometry. Those are actual physical obstacles. And so uh, it used to be a real issue where you just couldn't move on certain surfaces. Now it's not an issue, but the problem is you've got this mechanic where the player, if he encounters something of a certain elevation, he'll just kind of start rising over it. But it makes movement very weird and very slow in a lot of places because you keep getting, keep getting snagged on bits of geometry and bits of, of the level and and things like that. So, um, I was hoping to see a lot of these things ironed out. I honestly think that's just a, a Unity thing because I can't tell you how many indie-based Unity games I've played with, you know, uneven floor geometry, and it's the same uh, problems. And I just don't see it being fixed uh, tremendously. Again, they have done tremendous work on this. It's not a big issue anymore. It's just a minor annoyance and inconvenience but it is something to note that it is it is something you'll notice sometimes is moving around the the world will feel a little off um, sometimes your movement speed will just halt all of a sudden because you'll be getting stuck on stuff um, sometimes you'll be being pushed in different directions because you're glancing off bits of geometry so instead of going straight you'll start going diagonally stuff like that um, and it can be a little frustrating sometimes but nowhere near as frustrating as the original builds of the game could be so Again, this is more of a gripe and a nitpick. It's not like a big problem. Um, yeah, so I touched on those. And yeah, so um, that's my that's all I really have to say about the, the bullets that I wrote down, the pluses and minuses of the game. Oh, one last thing I wanted to touch on is that um, 
I made a criticism in my last video that uh, Kabiris didn't really show up until the end of the game. He was in the very beginning. He set the stage pretty well, set the story pretty well, and then he just disappeared. Well, there's a lot more Memora, uh, which are like the audio logs in this game, which are accessible. And uh, there is a lot more conversation. Well, not conversation, but Kabiris talks to you a lot more as you go through the game. He'll talk to you about different things you've done, different things you've accomplished, what you should do next. So it's a little bit more like how I expected him to be, a little bit more like Shodan, where as you progress through the game, uh, there'll be a new soundbite or something, something he says to you to make him feel more like an active character in the story rather than just some dude. And then another thing is that with the increased amount of Memora to find, yeah, you're getting a lot more of the story. You're understanding how Kabiris came to be, his relationship with the factions, why the factions are split up, um, you know, that kind of stuff. And so the end of the game and your choices at the end of the game make a lot more sense. They feel like they have a lot more weight. And um, one other thing is that, yeah, so he's part of the story throughout. He feels like a real presence, a real figure in the world. Um, you sort of begin to have a sort of, not like a personal relationship, but you feel a lot more connected to him than you did in previous builds. And there's a lot of sound bites I never heard before. So it's clear that they just hadn't had the time to put a lot of the story into the game and they were just trying to get the game out the door. Uh, and so a lot of stuff was missing and it's really nice that it's there now because the game feels like it actually has a story. And what's even better is that uh, when you finish the game, there is a nice little uh, kind of cutscene, kind of like a uh, closing credit scene that shows you what happens to all the factions that shows you what happens to um, uh, a lot of the characters you met along the way and what shows and shows you what happens to... Oh, and Kabiris even talks to you at the end. There's a little a video, actually, where he talks to you uh, specifically about your choices and your actions in the end of the game. So <clears throat> that's uh, much better than, than what it was before, which um, I think the first time I played it, it bugged out, so it was just a black screen. And then the last time I played it... Um, it was just a message from Typhon, again, on a black screen, and then it just went to credits. So, again, the game feels like it actually has a story now, and a conclusion, and um, I'd almost be interested to see what the ending, what changes in the ending if you decide, which is actually pretty easy, because they let you save right before the end. So, I'd, I'd be interested to see how the ending changes um, based on your decisions at the end of the game. Uh, but it's not, don't expect it to be like... Uh, like Fallout where you get like a completely different, you know, there's like five or six different endings and they totally, no, it's not like that. It's just what I'm saying is, you know, based on ending with basically a black screen to now feeling like there is a, there is a cohesive plot is again, it's just making, it made the experience feel a lot more polished, a lot more whole and uh, way more enjoyable for me. Um, so, uh, yeah, the takeaway for this review is that um, if you were waiting for Underworld to not be broken and to be more fun and for the systems to work and for things to make more sense and feel like the game that we wanted, um, yes, I, I would encourage almost anyone who owns the game already to play this build and start having fun with it and, and you can be rest assured you're going to have a more or less glitch-free experience and any glitches and bugs you're going to experience are just going to be minor inconveniences. They're not going to stop the game. They're not going to break the game. They're not going to halt your progress. And they shouldn't really take you out of the game either. Um, with that being said, I have two things to say. First of all, I hope this isn't the final build of the game, but it's going to be the final one that I'm going to review for a while. I've played this game uh, too much, and I think it's in a state now where um, I can... I can wholeheartedly recommend it, um, and the further improvements of the game aren't going to drastically change the way it plays or feels the way that from the original build to now um, has changed the game. Um, so, yeah, I, I uh, won't be uh, probably reviewing the next build, but what I'm saying is that I hope that they do continue to work on the game. 
you know, I'd like to see the additional runes come into the game. I'd like to see friendly AI start working. Um, I wouldn't mind it if they added some more, you know, side quests and maybe expanded the dungeons. Um, and the other thing I would say about this game that I wanted to say is I just really wish that they had communicated from the start that this, and I, I've said this in all my other reviews and I, it bears repeating, this is an early access game. It's closer right now to a full release than it's ever been and you could, you know, again, if they had released it in this state as a full release, I don't think as many people would have been as upset with the game because uh, it's 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 um, so much better than what, what we had before, right? But it was just not communicated by other side um, at all. And, and the fact that, you know, even with these build notes, I was expecting to see the additional, you know, the, the last two runes in the game and some explanation of, of how uh, players with a standard copy are supposed to get a hold of, like, the pet or the expanded backpack, you know. Um, things like that, that A, aren't, still aren't being communicated. They've communicated that there are additional runes in the game. They just haven't communicated when the other ones are going to be available. Especially since uh, back in Update 3, they were saying Update 4 is going to be kind of the definitive update to the game. To make it, you know, that's going to be like a, a sort of a finalization point and the rest is just going to be tweaks. Um, so, yeah, I think it was... I think we were all disappointed and I think that they would have been in a much better position had they just simply communicated. Hey guys, you know what? This is more of an early access title. It's not finished. We're going to be adding tons of stuff to the game. There's tons of stuff missing from the game, so just just wait and just be cool. Um, like the Arcane of the Bazaar. I don't think they added that after the fact just because fans are pissed. I think that was always supposed to be in the game, and they didn't have to p time to put it in and they were still working on systems um, because, I mean, even just the place that it exists in Mark Hall always felt like just this random empty space and now it has a purpose and I'm like, yeah, it seems like something was intended to be there. Um, so I still, for the life of me, can't figure out why they wouldn't have just communicated this earlier, um, but it's clear based on the history and everything I've seen up into this point that that's really what uh, this game was is just an early access game that was not listed as such um, and I think it will continue to be like that what I'd actually like to see from this game what I think they can do going forth from here is for example I really liked the fact that the dungeon layouts were different now um, they took some time to make things look at least visually different for people, hopefully like me, who had played the game before and were not excited about playing the exact same thing again with just some bug fixes. Um, and in addition to that, I think it's the second to last dungeon of the game has a completely new area that I have never seen before. So that was really nice to, and there was quite a bit to explore in it too. So it was nice to see and, and a breath of fresh air. Um, what I would actually like to see this game become is sort of uh, I wouldn't mind this game kind of being like a bit by bit title so you know how like uh, Rainbow Six Siege uh, started it started everyone hated it and then they slowly built it and now each year there's new content and so like every, you, you you know if you're playing current Rainbow Six Siege you're playing like year two or year three right content I wouldn't mind seeing something like that for this game where the DLC is like, okay, we've added a whole new dungeon, or we've added, you know, 16 new, like, side whatever dungeons that aren't just, like, bullshit, like, collect-a-thons, but, like, unique places to explore with new stuff, um, whole new levels to the abyss, um, maybe an aftermath campaign, uh, NBC, you know, maybe, uh, allies that you can actually take through the dungeon with you. I'd like to see... I wouldn't mind seeing them slowly build this and say like, okay, why don't you pay $10 for a DLC and, you know, you'll get a whole new level of the abyss and you'll get a companion that his AI actually works and he can come with you and fight with you and, and, um, maybe a new story quest or a, a new mini story or something like that. I wouldn't mind seeing them continue to, because, 
you know, the game being what it is right now, I would, it's, there's so much promise and it, it is so fun now in the update four that it's like, well, you know, I'd like to see more of this. I'd like, you know, this is, now you've shown me what you intended it to be more or less. I want to see more of it. I want to see you put things in that you had to take out before. I want to see you do whatever, but we can't expect them to continue to work on the game when they're not making that much more money off of it. So I wouldn't mind seeing them just kind of continually add content as long as it's, you know, worth the price of admission. You know, I don't want to just see like, oh, we added one more side quest where you have to rescue someone from an underground dungeon and it takes you five minutes to do and it's five bucks. I don't want to see that. But what I would like to see is them slowly expand uh, the Stygian Abyss, them slowly expand the world of Underworld Ascendant uh, with with uh, timed DLC and updates and stuff like that. I, would, I, would, I wouldn't mind seeing something like that. Um, from this game uh, because what it has to offer right now is you know if you've played it before you know um, after you play through update 4 there's not going to be a ton of incentive to go back through necessarily and play the game again and so I'd love to see you know and there also I know that there's missing dungeons um, from the original build if anyone remembers that original build there's a there's the intro dungeon that you go through and then they let you purchase some skills and they let you like find a couple of weapons laying around and then they test you on all your skills they touch test you on your stealth and on your avoidance of traps and on some of the combat and on a little bit of magic with this little test uh dungeon and if anyone remembers it it's like it's it's this central room with like a, a stone island coming out of the middle and a tree growing on top and that's actually where the portal is that takes you to mark hall um now, I know that was scrapped. There's a lot of stuff that was shown at different E3s and stuff that was scrapped. Like, I'd love to see some of the... Remember that E3 footage with the giant spider coming across the bridge and the Ascendant throws the, the torch? Or remember the one where the Ascendant is... Uh, you grab the crystal from that room and the lava starts going through the floor, but then this Minotaur starts chasing you. Like, I would love to see the game just slowly expand over the years. And you pay, you know, ten to fifteen dollars for a new DLC, and it's like, okay, the game stays alive, um, and the world just keeps growing. I wouldn't mind seeing that. So, um, yeah, that's my takeaway from Underworld Ascendant. Uh, check it out. I will have a full walkthrough up on my channel, uh, my my most current walkthrough, and you'll get to see. Uh, please forgive some of the. Um, portions in the footage where the visual quality drops again as i said i was using a streaming service to play the game uh nvidia geforce now the beta so you know if my uh if my bandwidth uh fluttered or uh you know somebody in the house got on youtube or, or uh, netflix or something while i was playing you you're definitely going to see some some drops in uh, image quality although i have to say i'm very happy overall it looks pretty good so you'll be seeing that and um yeah this is my review and i'm I'm happy to say this is going to be my first review with actual footage in it. Um, I know the, f <laughs> the few who have, who have watched my uh, channel before have pointed out that uh, while I'm reviewing the game, I'm not actually providing any footage. So I hope that, uh, uh, I hope that the footage helps kind of uh, emphasize my points and uh, get you excited for the game. All right.